Record. Sweet googly moogly. Stand up update. Oh stand yeah. Stand up update. Stand up update. Ah, oh, you've got a jingle now. Yeah, I've uh, I I've, I've stopped doing the thing. <laughs> <laughs> Latest update. I am not doing it. I, I couldn't get 10 people and uh, it became quite hostile on oh. the, the like the Facebook page where it was just like, we've given you this amount of time to get 10 people. My God. It's like, oh, well, mm, I probably could have got 10 people if you probably lowered your price by five pounds. But it, it does kind of make it sound a bit like a pyramid scheme. All you've got to do is invite ten people to our to to your show, and you'll be paid for your work. And then later on, hey, are any of you people fans of stand up? Do you want to learn some tricks of the trade? Just invite ten people to your mm. next performance, and then blah, 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 blah. and in just five steps, we'll have invited every single person in existence. <laughs> There's some people who sold like thirty or forty tickets, and I just thought, wow. To who? Oh, I don't know. I think they must have gone around work and literally got a gun to people's heads. Yeah. But it seems like it looks like they're going to sell the place out with about 20 odd people. So that's going to be. Well, we'll call it a maximum of 30 people, 10 minutes each at a maximum. So you're looking at a maximum time of about 300 minutes. <laughs> that's five hours. <gasps> so, oh my god. Based on that, they're definitely going to have to curtail it to say, right, you can't do any more than five minutes. Yep. And that's obviously going to knock it down to 150, which is still two and a half hours. Yep. Which is just... And that's assuming there's no in-between time. Or no exactly. Openings. That's just... That would be literally one after another, after another, yep. after another. No compare breaks, no pee breaks, anything like that. And, yeah, that's... I don't know, three hours... Seems about you know starts eight finishes about eleven. Well, yeah, maybe, but I some of the people who sold tickets. <laughs> I don't. I don't know if another five weeks of attempting to make them funny is going to make them funny. So what you're saying is, it's going to be a torturous three hours. I I think there are some there was some really good stuff. There was some really funny stuff, but some people were just kind of blatantly thieving jokes uh-huh. and other people it was just here is four and a half minutes of information here is a ten second punchline uh, the the balance is not quite right mm. who knows maybe it'll work out really well from, from what I did in the two weeks I feel like I learned more kind of potential sort of like improv exercises yeah that can prove if you can think on your feet rather than anything to do with jokes was by the wayside like it was just yeah but to be fair I only did two things so hey maybe it's gonna get really down to the nitty gritty you never know yeah maybe yeah. the course builds from there mm. so are you paying weekly then for it so you're not you're not going to lose out. I've not I, I've not paid anything. So, oh oh yeah, that's right. You pay by getting people to buy tickets. So yeah, I got two weeks of uh, well two well probably cut it to about four hours of free training, and yeah, like I said, there was some actual good um, good things I learned that like if I was ever put into kind of a group situation, I I think you could come up with some really good stuff. Um, I, maybe it's stuff that you've done before in your in your theatrical life. Um, uh, I've done some bits, some improv games and yeah, some, some group was, work. There was the one, did you do the... Um, there's one where you, you basically touch a shoulder. So there's two people who were in a situation. Now, careful, then, shoulder. 
Must be on the shoulder. Exactly. No butts. No coconuts. No coconuts. Uh, so two people are in a situation, and then as soon as one person touches one of them on the shoulder, the like the uh, the scene freezes, and the new person swaps in. To the you swap in, and you have to change the scene. In the, yeah, exact yeah. same pose, and you know you take it from there. I thought that was a uh, yeah. I thought that was a good idea, and uh, it does really show who can think on their feet and who really really can't, or who <laughs> has a really Weird, <laughs> like a really weird sense of what they should be doing <laughs> when <laughs> when the weirdest one when we were doing it was a guy who came in and just I, I think he just started uh, just trying to do his set and just like so Chinese people have massive penises uh, yeah, we were, yeah. To, we were meant to be down a mine but okay two, two seconds ago we were down a mine shaft mate <laughs> yeah I feel I feel you're not Embracing the game, the premise of this game. <laughs> yeah. mm. I feel that, like you know, you didn't, you didn't even take over the pose. <laughs> the other person, Gosh. you just, you just walked in and started doing you just comedy. Went, you just went straight to Oriental dicks. Maybe he likes Oriental dicks. Mm. It is my favorite <laughs> Leeds-based Chinese department store. <laughs> uh, I, yep, yeah, sure. Hmm. Yeah, uh, but I'm still so I'm gonna probably change the just giving page to be like, hey, I'm gonna actually try and get in a fucking open mic night if they ever email me back. If and, anyone uh, ever replies, sponsor me for that, maybe I don't know. So you're not gonna go to the uh, the show that these people were putting on then? Good God, no, because I'd have to pay, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not paying twenty pounds to see anyone. <laughs> to see any of those fuckers? If I again. if I was actually yeah, a friend, associate, or colleague of any of those people. No, I won't pay twenty pounds. I do not blame anyone for not paying twenty pounds to <laughs> want to come see me. I wouldn't want to come see me for twenty pounds. That's a disgraceful amount of money for a potentially five minute set. Well, okay then. There you go. So this this step in your journey has come to an end. Yes, but it just means that the uh, journey must take another route. The fork in the road has come, and I have taken the. Prong less travelled. You've diverted to an alternate spur. <laughs> Diversion to an alternate spur. Our second prog album. Prog rock album, yes. Mm. Diverting to the second spur. I love that. That's a great <laughs> prog rock album name. Because it's conveniently long and wordy. <laughs> uh, but yeah, we'll see how that goes. The, uh, the Eden Place... Never got back to me. Well, no, they did get back to me. They said that someone would ring. Uh, nobody ever rung. Or I don't think they did. I did get, like, two missed calls when I was at work. But when I googled the number, it said it was a PPI thing. So, unless the the Eden Sports Bar has a sideline. Has a sideline of claiming PPI. Yeah, PPI checks, maybe. You I mean, you got to do what you got to do to make the money these days. That's true, that's so. true. Yeah, deadline's fast approaching for those as well. So, mm. you've got to mm. got to get on when you can. Get it done. Get, Get it, it done, done before twenty nineteen. Do you do you know a thing of what about do you know what PPI is? Apart from what Don Trump tries not to get. <laughs> Sorry, I've borrowed that one, but it's such a good joke. Oh. Oh man, I'm really quite sad I'd not heard that. I thought it was really good. I was gonna steal it. Um <laughs> Take it, it's all yours. Work on the delivery because I do. Who, who did you steal it from? I can't remember. Oh, that's fine. Uh, PPI, Payment Protection Insurance, which is basically you, uh, so you get a credit card or a loan out, and on top of any interest you're paying, you also pay like a surcharge for a, effectively an interest payment. So it's if you've if you've had a loan? Uh, if you have a loan or a credit card, anything like that, and it was effectively, I think it was, if anything kind of happen to you like your circumstances change you know you were made unemployed or had a terminal illness the ppi would kick in and your things would be like it'd be covered basically but most of the time ppi was kind of a hidden it was a hidden charge it was kind of included that nobody really yeah effectively never informed about Mm. and just like an undercover written in thing and that's why there's a big kickoff about it I mean, uh, I imagine maybe 5% of cases it might have actually helped people, but 
Mm, yeah, it was. I think it's more the way it was done, rather. Sure, than yeah. It's the it, fact that the fact that it was no transparency is what people were. Yeah, which has yeah. caused the upset. That's fair enough. The mm. thing is, I know somebody who recently made a PPI claim and managed to get themselves five grand. Nice. And this is the kind of person I was like, really? You had a credit card? Mm, they let you have a... Oh, it was pre-2008 when anybody could when have anybody had a credit card. Yeah, there <laughs> yeah. you go. Yeah. yeah. You want a mortgage? We'll give you a 105% mortgage. What? Yeah, we'll just give you more money than the house is worth. Yeah, That's yeah, why fine. not? All you need oh. to do, you don't even need to put down any deposit. Just here, has have five hundred pounds and also a mortgage. Yeah, here, just just take all the money. Just yeah. take, here, here is the bank's money. Here's four billion pounds. <clears throat> take this money, and just whatever, do it. No, no, it's fine. We, we're sure you'll pay it back. Yeah, it'll be good. It'll be good. We can, we can't lose. We cannot lose, guys. This is the best way of banking in the world. We can't Absolutely. lose. Oh, guys, what happened? Oh, did, oh, did we lose? <laughs> oh, oh shit. And what you're saying is not our money, it was their money. Oh, God. Fred. Fred. Fred, we lost. Fred. It's all oh. gone to shit, Fred. Oh. God damn it, Fred. Why did you let this happen? You had one job, Fred. <laughs> and that was to prevent the global financial crisis of 2008. But you didn't. God damn it, Fred. This has been Money Matters with the Meanderthals. <laughs> <laughs> it's our new... Biannual segment, yeah. And do I mean it's... once every two years or once every six months? Who knows? Oh, I it's... just I just thought you meant that we like boy years and girl years. Ah, oh, that's true. We don't discriminate yeah. uh, based on gender or those who uh, have yes. no gender or, identity. Indeed, non-binary years. Yeah, uh... like uh, like two thousand, for example. That's uh... <laughs> yeah. Although anyway, you can, you can still express the number two thousand as a binary digit. Anyway, whatever. Yeah, let's not go too deep down that rabbit hole. Let's That's not dwell a... on any of those subjects. Yeah. Let's move on. But yeah, so we will see what happens. And yeah. And I will, you know, I will probably keep prodding you to say, hey, go out drinking more and find me <laughs> find me signs that say open mic comedy, any loser welcome. Well, uh, I was going to say, why don't you just turn up to some open mic night and then find out if they've got a sign up sheet or something? Oh, God, you've got to come up with the good ideas, don't you? The sensible quite, ones, quite a lot reasonable of them, ideas. They're, yeah, they, they're living in the past, man. They're using pen and paper. They don't even have email addresses. Jesus. No, what I want, I want the fucking millennial easy solution where I send you an electronic message and you say, yes, we have put your name down. Come along whenever. You come are along on this date for this yeah, time. You are a beautiful snowflake and you will. we will make the punters laugh. Because it would be unfair if they did anything else. Have you thought about the student bars? And I mean, like the literally the ones at the university. That's a good idea. Uh, I'll be honest, though, I wouldn't know the names or locations of any of them. You didn't go to the the university. Yeah, because yeah. fuck leads. <laughs> See, when you start making money, um, I get to be take five percent as your manager for coming up with these ideas. Well, you want five percent? Maybe you be my manager and my booker, and maybe uh, you go and give me a job. <laughs> yeah, how about that, Captain <laughs> Money Pants? Oh, uh, yeah, fair enough. You had one job, man. Get off your ass and get him a booking. <laughs> <laughs> Fred, damn it, Fred! Damn it, Fred! All I wanted was to get booked. No, Fred. No, booked, no, Fred. Booked, Fred. Fred, booked. I wanted a oh. good. I wanted a good booking, Fred. Oh, now it's all over my face. Oh, oh. Jesus. Who's going to clean the sheets, Fred? Oh. Who? No, not the books. No, don't clean the books. That, no. 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 Yeah, we're a legitimate business, oh. Fred. We were, anyway. God damn it. <laughs> God damn it, Fred. Oh. <laughs> ah, Fred Goodwin. Always a good source of uh, comedy material. Mm. Fuck is Fred Goodwin? Oh, I see that you didn't understand my Fred reference. Well, that's gone even better then. <laughs> I just thought Fred was random Joe. Random, no, random Fred uh, Fred Goodwin was the, essentially the guy who was head of RBS when it all came tumbling uh, down. I see. Uh, with the nickname Fred the Shred. and Because uh, yeah. he shredded loads of documents? Yes, exactly. Mm. See, it's, it's fun when a nickname is uh, easy to see through. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. <laughs> Transparency, just like you didn't give us, Fred. <laughs> uh, 
I probably won't put any of this in my set. Um, <laughs> Because there'll just be a bunch of confused 20-somethings going, What the hell? What? 2009? What? Was that even a year? Here's a weird one. At work the other day, uh, complete side tangent again, um, Mm. somebody traded in some DVD or game or something, but in the case, there was the original sales... Actually, it must have been from like like a SNES game or something. Okay. In the box was the original sales receipt. Which was uh, firstly throwback because it was from Woolworths oh, uh, when they sold this game for twenty nine ninety nine in nineteen ninety five. Nice. Yeah, this receipt is like twenty three years old. It's amazing. The person serving them was nineteen. <laughs> yeah, actually, this is it. The receipt is older than some of my staff. Uh, Disappointing. And you know, sidebar over. <sighs> God damn it, Fred. Why did you got to make time, Fred? What happened to Fred the Shred? Has he been, I presume, fired and fined? And oh, yeah. He, uh, yeah prisoned? He, he fell upon his sword, and uh, yeah, there was a whole legal proceeding. I think he is still technically earning, like, he gets a pension still from the Royal Bank of Scotland. Ah, the golden parachute. Um, indeed. Uh, mm. Yes, money. It's mucky business, but God damn it, we tend to need it. Yeah, true. So, yes, let's see what happens in the next stand-up update. Clue, it will probably be nothing, because I'll just be really lazy and still expect an email instead of getting off my butt. Clue, it'll be a while. <laughs> Speaking of work, I have a uh, a job interview. Oh. Uh, so that'll be uh, Is this fun. at your uh, current employer, or...? Uh, it's within current employer, yes. Ah. Um, and it is for a job in Leeds... And so naturally, it makes sense that the interview is in Manchester. Perfect. At 9 a.m. <laughs> yes. Uh, the things I will do for a hefty pay rise. Is it hefty? Or is that just because you'll be getting the pay rise? Well, mm, oh, maybe both. <laughs> the starting wage would basically be. Uh, what I'm already on now plus twenty five percent. So yeah, quite a hefty pay rise. Mm, so nice. yeah. So, uh, uh, but as with every job interview I go for, I will get the job because. Oh yeah. Yeah, I'll go into the interview and I'll perform mm, at best mediocre, and then at the end I'll be like, "Oh, do you want to hear a dick joke?" And <laughs> you should just go in there and treat it like that guy did with the uh, improv game. Just completely switch it up. Just <laughs> yeah. Go in there and be like. Tap the interviewer on the show. Tap the interviewer on the show. Right. At this point in the uh, interview, I'd like to take us on a slightly, <laughs> uh, slightly weirder prong. <laughs> okay, now, now, instead of in an interview, we're in the Arctic on a dog sled. Mm. I'll be Amundsen. You be uh, Captain Scott. And, uh... <laughs> <laughs> and any second now, you get to go outside for a for a brief amount of time, <laughs> and I'll stay here where it's warm. And the person interviewing me, who will probably be 24, will <laughs> look at me and go, what? I don't, <laughs> I don't understand anything that you just said. Yeah. Kids nowadays, you say as you storm out. <laughs> <laughs> they know nothing of polar expeditions. What, what is life without a subtle and in-depth knowledge of the exploration of the Arctic? <laughs> ah! Pshaw. Oh, and you get a call twenty minutes later. You got the job. <laughs> I liked your maxi kid. <laughs> <laughs> that was the test. <laughs> you have to stand up to me on the matter of uh, <laughs> Scott anything. and Hamilton's respective journey to the pole. <laughs> nice. Does mm, this, this mean sounds... you won't have to deal with, as we're known affectionately on the inside, the plebs? Sorry, the paying public. The area will actually be uh, a very wealthy uh, section of the business. Oh, so you get so, to deal with rich plebs. Yeah, rich plebs who will probably not be used to being told by a guy from Yorkshire, oh no, we can't do that. So, yeah, we'll see oh, how that you've, goes. you've got to put on the thickest Yorkshire accent when you tell him no. <laughs> hey, I'm dead sorry, and I know you're a rich footballer, but we can't do that. Oh, bugger. <laughs> yep, that'll do. Mm. I think that'll work. 
there's that clashing of cultures. Yeah, I, it can only bode well for me. There is also apparently a role play involved, so that'll be oh yeah, tedious. Come on, you've just had you've had two whole weeks of <laughs> yeah. improv game training. This is what it's been building up to. <laughs> this has been the final test. Yeah. <laughs> okay, now change topic. What? <laughs> No, no, come on, this is where the game's played, Okay, okay, I hear you're having a problem with your current account, but I need a location and a name. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Location, name, and a feeling. (laughs) Yeah. Also, a root vegetable. I'm hearing hearing disappointment and slight anger at your your financial services. Okay, we'll roll with that. (laughs) Oh, I'm going to fail so badly. (laughs) Nah, I'll be fine. What's what's the situation in retail land? <laughs> retail land is just pretty much what you'd expect. Yeah, kids. yeah. I've, I've got I've got no real groundbreaking stories from retail land at the moment. Keeps on keeping on. Yeah, um, we keep we keep doing our best to you know make you that dollar. Mm. And uh, as you may have may remember, we have certain. There are certain KPIs relating to uh, bonuses. Ah, key performance indicators. Damn right, yeah. Mm. Uh, we managed in one single transaction last week to completely wipe out one of our key KPIs, which has screwed our bonus over for at least 13 weeks. Go on, what the hell happened there? <laughs> yeah, it was Oh, well, it was just a, a, a product was mistaken for another product, which cost the company, uh, or cost the store, like uh, £1,000 at one, at one stroke. Right. Okay. What I'm going to do? Let's play the guessing game. Okay. So. Oh, somebody... let's not let's not play the guessing game. No, it's no, a boring let's story. Game. Let's. No, no, but I'm I'm going to guess. All right. Go from on. what from what I've seen before, somebody has bought in either a graphics card or a processor as a very high end PC or Apple product. Would that be right? Uh. Well. No. Oh. <laughs> Uh, although Apple product is correct, so it's an iPhone. And no, seriously, you're bad at this. Well, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> fuck you. I don't know Apple products. So hang on. So a portable device or a a computer device? Uh, portable device. Portable device. Yep. In fact, perhaps the most portable of devices. <laughs> iPod? Smaller. Smaller than iPod is a. Smaller than iPod. Yeah, everybody forgets about this product. Except people who really like them. Uh, an Apple Watch? Yeah. So, the Apple Watch, there are three tiers of the Apple Watch. Yeah, the first, second, third, gen. Oh, no, no, no. In each oh. generation, there are three tiers. Oh yeah! Oh no! Yeah. <laughs> oh. Um, so there's the Apple Watch Sport yeah. basic yeah. basic model. And then there's, there's the, the Apple, Apple Watch. Uh, Watch Classic, I think, or something like that. And then there's yeah. well, there's and then there's the very top edition, one which is like made out of unicorn dreams and elf rainbows and some kind of magical nonsense. Um, it wasn't one of those. It wasn't one of the pure gold ones that was bought yeah. in, but it was one. Uh, that was bought in as one of the more expensive models, um, so we probably ended up overpaying this customer by about seven hundred pounds. Yeah, because our uh, because that resulted in an, in an adjustment to our stock levels um, and uh, adjustment values are one of our KPIs mm. gone. That probably wiped out our target for a six week period, but because it's working on a thirteen week rolling cycle, mm. yeah, we're kind of. We're kind of done, at least for a little while. Man, the how, oh. the horror, man, who, the horror of the person who found that. I was, I'm guessing it wasn't you that caught it. Oh no, I was, I was at home one day and suddenly a, a picture pops up on the manager's chat of uh, the the watch face, like on a on a cradle with the price label that it was bought as, and then above it the price label that it is, and the oh. caption was, "It isn't what it says it is. It is the top label." I'm like, ah. Well, I am not dealing with that. Nope. 
I did once buy the uh, Link amiibo in as a Zelda amiibo, and I was not allowed to live that down for a day. Because you're a plebeian. Indeed. It's because we were talking about The Legend of Zelda when they handed it over, and my brain went to Zelda, and I typed it in, and I bought it in as well, that. But yeah, you know what it didn't for... do? didn't cost the business £700. It didn't cost pounds. the business. <laughs> it cost yeah, it co- them it two. <laughs> it cost, well, it's not done on buying value, it's done on sale value. So the sale value difference is something like, uh, well, we probably didn't overpay by seven hundred pounds then, because the sale difference value is about um, eight hundred and fifty. Yeah, it's it's stupid. But still, if you're that guy who got the money, you'd be like, <sighs> yes, this is fine. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> this is fine. I'll take it. I'm gone. Yeah. Mm. Bye. Yeah, we had a there was there was. Retraining happened. We talked to the uh, pricing department about way things are certain codes are displayed, and yeah, yeah, yeah. That was not a, that was not a fun experience, and probably not great for people to listen to. But <laughs> oh, don't worry, it'll get edited down to be a, a bite-sized chunk of goodness. Yeah, I'm like sure, a, like a tiny Kit Kat chunky, like a bite-sized chunk of goodness, like a tiny bacon sandwich. Oh. Imagine that as finger food. Yeah, like little. Instead of like volivants or something at a posh party, you just have tiny bacon sandwiches. Yeah. That are like one bite. Just little tiny bacon rounds. Mm. A... Oh. <laughs> Tickled your pickle there a little bit, didn't we? <laughs> a little bit. A little bit. Hmm. Mm. Yes. Now the question is, where do you get tiny bread things from? Well, you can just make your own, I suppose. I might just, just cut get, them out of a loaf of bread. I might just get communion wafers, uh, <laughs> so there can be like two holy. communion wafers with a yeah. with a, a slither of delicious bacon in the middle. Yeah, and then <laughs> that's how you get me Christian. Like, oh, <laughs> we've upgraded the body of Christ. Mm-hmm. Got a little bit of salty goodness in the middle now. No, oh. not that. Oh. Not that. Oh. Don't you there? Don't you? Don't you besmirch the Lord with your <clears throat> dirty jizz talk. That was always the problem. The little bit of salty goodness. Mm, that's what Mary Magdalene said. If anybody knows who Mary... Everybody should know who Mary Magdalene is. I'm sure you're all we've theologians done, in your own Scott right. we of the Arctic. Now it's on to the bi- bibliological... Bibliological? Bibliological. <laughs> bibliological? <laughs> that's relating to a library. <laughs> So, Mary Magdalene, the librarian, everybody knows who she was. I'm pretty sure that that would be a Jesus porn fantasy. <laughs> oh, while I die on the cross, put these glasses on. Why? No, oh, just don't. Just, it'll, be, uh, it'll be super fucking hot. Just humor me. <laughs> <laughs> wow, how about that? You still got enough blood in here to do that, huh? Okay. No. <laughs> there goes the Ooh. loincloth. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> no, not the crown of thorns on that head too. No, oh, no. <laughs> Pontius, why? And thus was born some Catholic sects where they <laughs> self-flagellate. And... and on the third day, we shall mount a crown of thorns upon the head of our penis. For it is the way of the Lord. And on the third day, he did rise again. If you know what I mean. Yeah, let's not get on the uh, topic of religion. I've, uh, I think back. we've... We've covered those bases a few yeah, times. Yeah, going like just going back to the stand-up thing. I have done some. I don't really have jokes. I just have sort of horrible things I say that people find amusing. I can attest. Yeah, I've written some religious stuff, but I've not yet dared try it out because, you know, you yeah. Yeah, I, I think the problem with it is that it's um, it's got to be. Based on like a shared knowledge, mm. so you can make fun of. I don't know buses are always late because everybody's been on a bus, but not everybody has a deep understanding about some of the minor players in, yeah, in theological history. So you know, you got to be a little bit careful about it. Mm, make a joke about the Pope, but not about your local clergy, <laughs> unless it's like big news. Unless it's big news, or it's like yeah. you know, like the local church circuit annual meeting or something. And then, yeah, you definitely roast the vicar. Just like the Vikings did. Because it's what they expect. This will go down a storm on the open mic, sir. <laughs> <laughs> I 
think they were expecting a different kind of roast. <laughs> <laughs> I've never like I don't understand. I've I've tried to watch those like Comedy Central roast things. I I, I just don't get it. Like I I don't either. It's a bunch of people coming up on stage and just going, "Eh, this guy's fat and he's an asshole." Hey, fucking he fingers his fucking wife and she don't feel nothing. Ah, ha, ha, this is amazing comedy. No, it's not. I don't. It's again, maybe it's one of these cultural of as much as, <laughs> as, much as American culture exists. <laughs> the, only Ameri- the only Harsh American burn. culture is growing on their bread. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> oh, we'll enjoy that down at Raffles. <laughs> but yeah, it's just it just it's one of these things that just pings off me. Like I, I don't yeah, get I, this. What I don't understand either. Like why? Why? Uh, why? What? Yeah. Is it because uh, Americans hate to see somebody who's in authority? Like this is why uh, in all the movies they hate the British. The British are the bad guys because we sound authoritarian because mm. we used to be in charge. So they have to like overthrow the the person who's in charge. So like. You, it's ne- you never do like a comedy roast of Joe and accounts. You do a you do a comedy roast. Yeah, of... you do it of the boss because yeah. I suppose maybe it's because Americans don't have that sense of like they're not good at uh, self-deprecating humor. So right. they probably never see their higher ups make fun of themselves, and Americans like it's not really. It's not a big part of their makeup, and they don't have a real sense of much sense of irony. No, they're not very. Uh, uh, yeah, and maybe that's why it's so forthright, is because it's all kind of built up, and they yeah, and it just suddenly it gushes out in one massive wave of disagree- <laughs> disapproval. Yeah, that for some reason they find amusing. And that's the thing, though. The person who's the the target of the roast has to has to laugh along with it because. Then it's seen as them having a good sense of humour. Yeah. Maybe this is it. Co- Americans just don't get comedy. <laughs> like, and when they do, they turn a little bit rapey. <laughs> Whoa. Well, oh, Louis I don't C- think there's a correlation Louis- there, but maybe there is. Louis C.K., funny guy, little bit rapey. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Bill Cosby... A beep bop do bop a little bit of funny guy. Pretty up there on the rapey scale, actually, more than a little quite, bit. Quite quite a lot rapey. Mm. You know, maybe... I'm just putting it out there. It's a theory, you know. Uh, it's empirical theory, yeah. testing required. Mm-hmm, happy mm-hmm. happy to amend. Based, should should you know, new evidence come to light that... Exactly. Yeah. But based on the cultural zeitgeist of the current era, uh, I maintain that this is a sound theory, and uh, I'm willing to... <laughs> Uh, go on the American open mic comedy circuit to uh, test it out. And when they decide that you're not funny, that will be empirical proof that you're not a rapist. Exactly. Oh, no, because you said no. You said the causality goes one way, not the other. So, mm. Mm. Or I, can't... I can disprove my own theory, be unfunny, and also be a bit rapey. Well, there you go. That's. Yeah. Uh, I feel in the name of science, you should, even in the name of science, you probably shouldn't do that. Cultural zeitgeist, you wanker. <laughs> Oh, somebody did a sociology. <laughs> oh, oh. Cultural zeitgeist. Uh. Oh, you middle class bastard. Uh. I felt bad for knowing what it meant. Mm. <laughs> this uh, it's amazing. I I never consider myself a particularly smart person. But at the same time, I think I must be quite uh, well, it depends whether you, what you classify as kind of smart and intelligent and stuff. But I think people who tend to be more intelligent or smart or whatever you want to call it have the ability to realise that they're not particularly that smart or intelligent compared to what could actually be done. Whereas people who are not as intelligent will believe they are intelligent based on things that they can say, which is words like zeitgeist and misanthrope and. Ah, uh, I see. What, I see what you're saying. Uh, and not realise that they may be using them out of context, or you know, they they will they will have the belief that they are intelligent. See, and I th- I think it's about again, it's about self awareness. Mm. 
people some some people think that the important it is important to use fancy words to sound fancy. Not us though. We just use them for fun. Not us. We're we're stupid. <laughs> we're dumb, but we still know the big words. We're dummies with big words. Yeah, we're smart enough to know that we're dumb enough to use these big words correctly. But there it is. Dumb enough to know that you're smart enough to know what they mean, while the yeah. Uh, Go on. You're on a roll. Is uh, while not trying to come off as a smart ass. Yeah, that'll do. There you go. Anyway, you get me booked on the open mic circuit over in America. Go! I'll pack my bags, I'll get over there now. Let's live the American dream. Life, liberty, and abusing foreigners. <laughs> and not getting found out for about 30 years. Yeah, that, that does sound a bit like the American dream, yeah. Mm. yeah. And now, now, the time is near, and so we face the final curtain... Uh, and that's that's how we're going to end that episode. <laughs> Boom. Nice. Boom! 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 Knocked it out of the park. Boom! Did you, uh, uh, did you get a chance to uh, listen to the Rastlamania? Yeah, I did. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, yeah. Did you did you like how I seamlessly transitioned into the boom at the end? I did. Yeah, it was. Uh... <laughs> you gotta do what's the best for your bank balance, if you know what I mean. Mhm, mhm. Mm. You gotta think about them dollars, baby. <laughs>